Hello, this is a Camtasia PowerPoint voiceover of a January 31st session, which is Session 6 of Business 210. What we're going to focus on today is disclosure and what I like to call CSI accounting because it's we're going to figure out what the missing numbers are. To start off, Uh, we always start with what do you know? So let me get a pen and let's think about what we know. Well, we know that debits equal credits. We know that assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity plus revenue minus expense. That debits increase assets, credits decrease, expenses act like assets, and then the uh, liability shareholders equity and revenue acts the exact opposite. We also know that we have different accounts and those accounts each have a T. And the debit side is the left side and the credit side is the right side of whatever the account is. So what we're going to be doing today is reconstructing those accounts and the journal entries that go with those accounts uh, to find the missing numbers. So we're going to start first with accounts receivable. And you'll recall that accounts receivable, there's only two things that can happen. Either you can sell on account, and when you sell on account, that means the customer says, oh, bill me later. And we debit accounts receivable, and we credit sales. So when I look at the accounts receivable account, we know that if we see a, a lot number on the debit side, that that is sales on account. The only other thing that can happen in accounts receivable is that the customers pay their bills. So when customer pays, we debit cash and we credit accounts receivable for however much the customer pays on their bills. So if you see a credit in accounts receivable, you know that you receive cash from customers. The sales account we know is a revenue account and so we'll always have a credit balance. Um, and so sales, whether they're on account or whether they're for cash, will show up on the credit side of sales. So here's our uh, fact situation. It says cash collected from customers during the year was $38,000. That accounts receivable as of the beginning of the year was $14,000. And sales revenue or sales on account for the year was $45,000. So the question is, is what is the ending balance? And the ending balance is 21000 And how I got that was I added up the debit side, just like you're supposed to, subtracted the credit side, and said which side is larger? Well, the debit side is larger. So we have a debit balance, which makes perfect sense in accounts receivable because it's a current asset account, and so it should have a debit balance. And, oh, just to be sure, Sales revenue is 45, so that would show you that we um, debited accounts receivable and credited sales, which would have been this first entry that I showed you here. Okay, let's look at another one. Here we're going to look at wages payable and wages expense. Wages payable is a liability account, specifically a current liability, so it's increased by credits, decreased by debits. We know that when uh, we, rec we record the payroll, that's when the employees work and uh, they turn in their time cards, we always debit um, wages expense and credit wages payable. So when you see this, this is the recording of the payroll, and that would be 
when we uh, increase the payables or when we've used employees. When we get around to payday, that's when we debit uh, wages payable and credit cash because that's when the employees take their checks home with them. So that would be when you would reduce the wages payable account. So here's our fact situation. Cash payments during 2012 were 35000 so we paid on payday $35,000 in cash. Wages payable at the end of the year was 17000 and wages expense during the year was 39. So that's what showed up on the income statement. So we can see that the missing number here is what was wages uh, payables beginning balance. And if I do my math correctly, I believe it's $13,000. And how I got that number was you work backwards. So the ending balance, reverse signs, add 35000 to it, subtract 39000 and you get that beginning balance. And you can check that out by adding 13000 to 39000 subtracting 35000 and you do get that 17000 ending balance. Oops. The next one is about prepaid rent. And prepaid rent, uh, like prepaid insurance, uh, is a current asset account. So it's increased by debits, decreased by credits. And so um, we know that prepaid rent will increase when I buy uh, rent before it's due. In other words, we pay the landlord before it's due. In which case, I would debit prepaid rent and credit cash. So that's what you would see to increase the prepaid rent account. When we've used rent or occupied the space and the, the rent has passed, uh, used rent is when we're going to debit um, rent expense and credit prepaid rent. And usually this is an adjusting entry at the end of the period. So we're going to make that an adjusting entry. HAE, which says how much rent have I used this period? So, and this would be number two as well. So prepaid rent, according to the facts, uh, at the beginning of the period was $12,000. Prepaid rent at the end of the period was fifteen thousand, and the rent expense was twenty-one. So the question is: Is how much did you pay in cash for rent during the period? We know how much the rent expense was, but how much cash did you pay for rent? Not how much rent did you use? So to find that missing number, again I work backwards and. 15,000 is the ending balance. Reverse sign, add 21,000. Reverse sign, subtract 12,000. And I find that I paid rent of $24,000 that year. And I can prove that to myself because 12,000 plus 24,000 minus 21,000 is the ending balance of $15,000. So let's see another one. In this particular problem, we are given the scenarios of the before and after adjusting entry. So the prepaid rent just before making the adjusting entry was $14,500 and just after was $11,800. So prepaid rent went down $2,700. In addition, if I look at rent expense, I can see that rent expense went from just before the adjusting entry of 6500 to just after of 9200 so rent expense went up 
2700. So what we can say is that uh, rent expired and so I would have debited rent expense and credited prepaid rent for the amount of the change which is $2,700. Prepaid insurance went down from before to after the adjusting entry by $700 and insurance expense went up by $700. So I bet the adjusting entry was debit rent expense, excuse me, insurance expense for how much I used or consumed, which was 700 and that came out of the prepaid insurance account, which was the asset, because that prepaid insurance account went down 700 So the asset, which represents something that's future or potential value, became used or consumed, meaning it's an expense now. And the last one has to do with depreciation. And as you can see, depreciation expense went up 2400 and accumulated depreciation that contra asset account also went up, which in effect made assets go down. So we would debit DE, depreciation expense, credit AD, accumulated depreciation for $2,400 because that's how much property plant equipment we used. So of the cost of PP&E, we used 2400 That's why the expense went up and the asset went down. And here are the beautiful entries uh, on a nice clean sheet of paper. Here's another one. Salaries payable looks like it went up $1,200 and salary expense also went up. $1,200. So it appears here that we have not a deferral like we had on the other page, but this is an accrual where we're going to expense it now but pay it later. So we're going to um, debit salaries expense. So it went from um, 3500 to 4700 meaning the adjusting journal entry was for twelve hundred and the salaries payable account went from thirteen hundred to twenty five hundred meaning it went up twelve hundred dollars so do you see how those those lay out and those are both relate together so this is one this is one when we look at unearned revenue we know that's a liability account where customers have paid us cash in advance and if we see that the account went down from um, 800 to 600, I can see that we earned $200 of um, those prepaid uh, by the customers. So we provided goods or services now for $200. So fees earned went from before 87,600 went up by $200 to 87800 And I don't like that one there because you're going to get confused.